For over 70 years, the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Marin has worked to inspire joy and justice in an imperfect world, sharing life's journey, celebrating many paths, and acting to make a difference. UU Marin celebrates people from all walks of life. No matter how you make your living or how you experience the sacred, no matter who you are, where you're from, or who you love, you are welcome here. If you're seeking open-hearted community, a place where you can have a real day-to-day -day impact in the world, and a space for the whole family to grow spiritually, come check out the church at the top of the hill. Come join you. So this month, the theme is surface. When I first heard this, I thought, but I go to service every Sunday morning. Thanks to Linda Klein last week, this was a whole different definition of service. So I began reflecting on what is my definition of service. Have I ever been in service? When? Where? How? 
first, my definition of service is to help others. Have I? Yes, I believe I have many, many times. When? Where? How? Well, I can remember back to the fifth or sixth grade, and I was always helping the teacher do something. Pass out papers, collect papers, clean up the classroom at the end of the day. I can also remember being very active in school events and activities. The school play, the music recital, running for student body office. I thoroughly enjoyed all of this, being involved. At the time, I didn't think of it as being in service. Then in my more mature years, I just automatically began helping people, others. Maybe someone dropped something at the grocery store and I'd reach down and pick it up for them. Hold the door open for a person at the coffee shop. Take my friend to a doctor's appointment, and so on. I dearly loved volunteering for five years, my first grade class in San Rafael School District. By the end of my tenure, my original first graders were now sixth graders. What fun it was to see the growth in character and heartwarming to feel that my service may have contributed in some small way to their class. I served on the board of directors for my HOA in the neighborhood for 25 years. In under two years from coming and joining UUCM, I am a reader, a worship associate, as this morning, do the touch of beauty, and support the coffee snack team. And last but not least, I am the current treasurer on the board of directors. Yes, I keep my feet moving. For my religious journey needs to include service to others. It is not only our responsibility here at UU, but throughout our greater community. One can volunteer at a school. There's a public library your next door neighbor, the family down the street whose father just lost his job and the mother cleans house for other people six days a week. Our very own social justice committee does a myriad of things to help the needy. How about writing postcards to help get out the vote? The list is endless. We just need to put on our thinking caps. Come on, everyone. I know you can do it. Thank you. And if you sincerely don't believe that you have this kind of time, there is always financial aid to our community. Inclusive. After all, this is Pledge Month for the next fiscal year. I am the treasurer. My favorite vote, quote, is from Mahatma Gandhi. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Thank you and namaste.
Hi, I'm Ann Spatola. 30 years ago, this October, I came to this congregation with my family, Teresa and our three young children, five-year-old twins and nine-year-old David. I wasn't looking for a spiritual home, but I think Teresa secretly was. I was, however, interested in a welcoming space where our family would be embraced. Our children attended the various RE programs, including district and general assembly events. The children made lifelong friends and were positively impacted by the adults in the congregation. Our children respected them and appreciated the experiences the adults shared with them. Teresa and I also made connections and friendships over the years. We have so many memories within these walls from watching our children march off to their classes and progress through the RE curricula, Teresa's ordination and getting married here. Reflecting on the past 30 years, I have to admit that this faith has affected me in many ways. I have learned so much about myself and I truly believe it has given me the tools to explore my own spiritual, spirituality and develop more meaningful experiences. Thus, Unitarian Universalism became a part of who I am. The seven principles, and now eight, resonate with my own values and outlook on how I want to interact with others and the universe. So why do I pledge? I could come here and get what I need without contributing much at all. What would that say about my commitment to this faith and this congregation? If it has truly had a positive effect on me and my family, then I do have a responsibility to make it possible for all to share in the benefits. My responsibility goes beyond the monetary, which is definitely necessary. I have a Rosie the Riveter poster that says, if you want it done right, hire a woman. I say, if you want to make an impact, then get involved. I have served on many committees in this and other congregations. I am now in my fourth year on the Board of Trustees and served previously 2004 to 2006. I love this congregation and I want it to thrive, endure, and be available to many families into the future. Our board is entrusted with ensuring the health of the congregation. It is an honor to serve on it and work collectively toward achieving the goals that would enhance the congregation. It is also a very rewarding experience. I find that board work and certain committees feed my soul and give me nourishment to do more. It's almost like I get more energy when I'm more active. That was certainly true over 20 years ago when Teresa and I both worked full time in the East Bay and had three kids still in school. We were both involved in either board work, committees, and or search. Yeah, we have a lot invested in this place, as many of you, as you do as well. It has served my family well, and I too must serve it well for myself, for you, and for generations to come. of compassion
fruit of life. Come to me, come to me. Spirit of life, come unto me. Oh, sing in my heart all the stir. Here we are online for worship this week as the remarkable transformation of our church continues with fellowship hall floors being refurbished and refinished, ensuring decades more worth of services, meetings, dances, and classes can commence. Here we are online for worship this week in the midst of our combined pledge and capital campaign drive. And this is always one of those strange times in the church year when we end up diving into one of these topics that Unitarian Universalists seem to have a pretty significant aversion to. Money. And not just money, but giving of money and talent and time. The sharing of financial resources that keeps congregations going. By now, though, uh, you guys know that I'm a pretty direct person. My ministerial style is not the most subtle. Uh, I like to steer right into the storm, uh, take topics head on. Uh, I'm a go deep or go home kind of guy. So let's go deep into pledging, into generosity, into the what's and why's and how's of how money is raised and spent at UU Marin and what the next couple of years ahead uh, have in store for us all. Now, you've heard me say before uh, that I'm a religious humanist. 
but it's important to know that I'm also a religious socialist, which means that I believe in my interpretation of ancient scripture and myriad forms of global spiritual belief systems, uh, that it is our sacred duty as religious seekers, as human beings with creative, animated, and animating souls to be generous and giving to one another on this earthly plane, to transform this world and our communities into more materially just and hospitable places for our siblings in the here and now. And I believe that the more we share and give of ourselves and our talents and our resources, we get back innumerable rewards of the spirit. Our tangible materials are given, and what we receive is a refreshed, abundant spirit that has the capacity to change lives and communities, to change the world. Proverbs 11, 24 through 25 says, One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes will be refreshed. So, how will our community be refreshed? First, let's talk about the Our Community, Our Turn Capital Campaign, begun in the summer of 2022 uh, with a focus on renewal, accessibility, and enhancement. Over the last two years, this congregation has raised roughly $2 million to engage in an ambitious array of projects that will modernize, stabilize, and fundamentally transform our congregational home. I have to admit, uh, sometimes I feel a little late to the party, as I was called and began this ministry with Yuya Marin after the incredibly dedicated capital campaign team and my predecessor, Reverend Marcus, had already raised a remarkable amount of the funds. And yet, I am so unbelievably grateful that I get to be here for the transformation. We have a solar array atop the congregation that provides renewable, clean energy. We have a new, well-functioning sewer line that will last us another 75 years. We have gorgeous wood floors that look as good as new. And we're about to embark on a transformation of our courtyard and of our interior that will make this one of the most beautiful Unitarian Universalist churches in the entire country. It's important to note that this project is not just some project of vanity or aesthetic ambition. The work being done in this capital campaign project is vital to our ability to continue on for generations. When UU Marin was founded and eventually picked this hillside as its home, much of the work of building and establishing this physical congregational home was done by congregants themselves. The design of the building reflected at the time modern, but now timeless trends in architecture and style. And generations of congregants have made their mark, contributed to our infrastructure in innumerable and immeasurable ways. Our beloved Koi Pond is dedicated in the name of congregant Kathleen Rice. Our walking paths are dedicated in the names of the congregants' founding couple, Gordon and Adina Robinson, and congregant Art Wesley. Our beautiful mulberry trees were a gift from and planted by congregant Ken McKinnon. Our magnificent front doors with custom glasswork were a gift from and dedicated to congregants Dr. John and Marguerite Siemens. And the balcony that I go out and stand on staring out over one of the most amazing views in Marin County, was refurbished by our own beloved Ann Bailey and is dedicated to her incredible husband, the late great John Coons. These are just a few names and a handful of the hundreds of hundreds of congregants over the 75 years that Union Marin has been in existence that gave of themselves no less than their money to renew, enhance, and make more accessible the beautiful space the spiritual community calls home. But in order for us to continue to live in beloved community and share this sacred space for generations to come, we have to invest our time, treasure, and talent. 
The transformation of our courtyard is vital to us remaining an insurable, safe, and accessible institution. The expansion of our hallways is crucial to us being able to truly live into our shared spiritual values of multi-generational, inclusive, and accessible community. Right now, when I wait in the courtyard after service to speak with you all, I stand there with my coffee cup and uh, often tense up in fear that one misstep or an uneven brick could turn a gorgeous Sunday afternoon into a medical emergency. And I can't tell you how many times I've feared that one of my kids running down the narrow hallways, as kids are apt to sometimes do, might accidentally bump into an older beloved congregant. The spiritual values of our desire to live in multicultural, pluralistic, multi-generational community call us into very real, very tangible, very material, and very expensive practical decisions. Just like we know that thoughts and prayers alone can't change domestic policy in America, our spiritual convictions alone cannot be made manifest without hard work and transformative financial contributions. Right now, the overall capital campaign project will cost about $2.6 million. We've already raised about $2 million. So I'm going to just be straight up with you. We are currently facing a roughly $600,000 shortfall that we have to make up one way or another. And we have to do it soon. Shovels are in the dirt July 1st, and we're looking at months of construction ahead, well into the next church year. We've received nearly 20% of pledges for that next church year already, but so far only one had additional contribution to the capital campaign. It's important to know that in December of this last year, capital campaign leaders and members of the Board of Trustees raised their own contributions to the capital campaign by 10% or more. Now, I haven't spoken that much about the capital campaign because I truly believe that its ideas, its implementation, its results have to come from the hearts and through the will of the congregation itself. I'm only just getting to know the spiritual home, and the impact of this project will far outlive and outlast me. But I will say this. Our ability to grow as a congregation, to host incredible events, to expand our potential as a cornerstone of Marin County's spiritual, artistic, and intellectual culture, our ability to bestow this congregation to successive generations, it depends upon this project coming to full and transformative fruition. In order for this shared ministry that you and I have embarked upon to grow into the exciting array of possibilities and priorities that I know that we all want it to, this capital campaign project needs to succeed and we need to see it through to completion. I'm asking everyone in this congregation, whatever amount you can, whether it's $100, $10,000. Whether you've already made a capital contribution, capital campaign contribution, or if you've held off or just weren't particularly interested before, please, as your minister, as the person called to steward and shepherd this congregation in this time and in this era, I'm asking you to make a contribution to this project. Let's show up not just for one another, but for all of those who came before us. Let's show up for all the generations of you, you Marin congregants yet to come. Now, the other half of this fundraising drive is pledging. And some people might be saying, well, I donate every Sunday via the QR code on the back of the order of service. I give to the virtual basket. Isn't that pledging? Some people might be saying, well, why don't we just use our pledge money to finish the capital campaign? And I want to clarify some of this because it is confusing. I didn't grow up as a church person. I'm unchurched, so to speak. Ironic, I know, but it's the truth. I only came to Unitarian Universalism in my 30s. And UU congregations don't actually have the same spiritually ingrained culture of tithing that so many other congregations do. 
So learning the ins and outs of church finances and fundraising is not an intuitive or easy thing, but we can learn it together. So in the spring of every church year, we prepare a draft budget for the next church year. This budget will ultimately be voted on and approved by you, the voting members of Union Way. But you also have the incredible power of helping to influence the budget via your pledge. We build the budget based upon the known pledges that come in every year in our fundraising drives, just like this one that we're in right now. And a pledge isn't a check. A pledge isn't the money itself. A pledge is a promise. It's a commitment. It's part of being in covenanted community. It's you, the member, saying over the next year, me and mine, our family, can pledge to give you, you Marin, this amount of money. How you ultimately fulfill or pay your, pay your pet pledge is up to you. Some folks want to get it out of the way and write one large check in the beginning of the church year. Other folks, folks space it out quarterly. And some people sign up for monthly payments for, of their pledge to be auto-drafted directly from their bank accounts, sort of like a spiritual subscription service. Your promise to you, you Marin, would come out just like your Netflix or your Spotify or your HelloFresh payments do. It's important to remember, though, you, you Marin covenants with you to be there through thick and thin, to show up in the best and the worst of times. So finances should never be a barrier to your full membership at UU Marin. If you hit hard times and need to modify your pledge, or if you simply can't pledge in a particular fiscal year, that's not a problem. No shame in your game. I've pinched pennies for most of my life. And now I rely upon my wife's budgeting prowess to make miracles happen for our family. It's okay if you can't give that much, or at all monetarily. We only ask that you communicate with us about it. If we know, then we can all plan. And if you ever need help, the church can show up for you in a variety of ways. That's the kind of alternative economic system that we get to create up here. Up here, it's not a rat race. It's not a vice. No one gets squeezed up here on the hill. We're in this together, sharing, pooling, acting collectively. Now, sometimes it may feel like our financial priorities are at odds. For instance, it is a major priority of this congregation as reflected in the Family Ministries Retreat, the Congregational Startup, and the Leadership Council, that we have a vibrant, multi-generational, pluralistic, and fun lifespan religious exploration and spiritual development program. Reverend Lynn, who has been our Family Ministries Director and overseen the religious development of our children and youth, is retiring at the end of this church year. Her service to us has gone far beyond Sunday mornings. Reverend Lynn and her wife Nancy raised their boys in this congregation, and now she's given us years of incredible work fostering our children's inquisitive spirits. There's no way that we'll ever be able to replace Reverend Lynn. Her legacy of service will be with us for years to come. But we do need to hire a new director and to expand and build off of the incredible growth that Reverend Lynn has provided for us. But the landscape out there for REs is pretty tough. Do you remember about a year ago when Reverend Marcus explained that for the first time ever, many churches were going without not just settled ministers, but interim ministers too? Well, the situation with religious education is even more complicated, especially in the Bay Area with cost of living as high as it is. Currently, two or three other Bay Area UU congregations are also looking for directors for their religious education programs, some with larger, some with smaller compensation packages than the one that we are budgeting for. And the truth is, we have to budget for this next church year, keeping in mind that we'll have less rental income 
and more construction overhead with the capital campaign. <coughs> but all of that is just background noise. When we think not about the money we'll spend, but what we actually want to spend it on. When we're talking about showing up for each other, it means to me that we're investing in a community that will see our children through some of the most complicating, complicated and alarming times in American history. That it will teach them the value of generosity, kindness, courage, resilience, truth, justice, hard work, tough questions, compassionate love, and multi-generational legacy. Our kids will get to grow up with a dozen, dozen different sets of grandparents. Our kids will get to grow up in touch with a religious heritage that blends Buddhist, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, pagan, humanist, indigenous, and Hindu theological understandings into something that will endure for them through thick and thin. And our kids will grow up knowing that from the moment they came into this world until they were launched off to take wing on their own epic journeys, that they have a community in their corner rooting for them supporting them, helping them, never judging them, but always wishing for them love and peace and growth. You can't put a price tag on that. That kind of community is invaluable. And when I think about our pledge drive, what the money in our general operating fund will go to supporting, I have to remember and realize that a beautiful courtyard and an expansive hallway are only as lovely as the life that will be lived within them. So we must support both the transformation of our physical infrastructure, but also the transformation of our spirits and our souls by our support for Yuya Marin's holistic ministry. One of the 20th century's uh, most influential Unitarian Universalist ministers was the Reverend Dr. John Wolfe. He ministered to uh, All Souls Tulsa, the church formational to my own ministerial journey, uh, for an astounding 35 years. And he grew All Souls Tulsa into the largest, most influential UU church, not just in the United States, but in the world. All Souls Tulsa had its own television show in the 80s and 90s. And now, under the 20-year ministry of Reverend Marlon Lavinar, All Souls has had an online membership program with international reach. And the seeds for that kind of reach were planted as far back as 1960 under Reverend Dr. Wolf's ministry. And there are a million great quotes and stories about John Wolf. Uh, he was quite a personality, but there are two that I uh, want to tell you about now. First, John Wolfe made the bold, simple, profound statement that, quote, there is only one reason for joining a Unitarian Universalist church, to support it. And that statement, in all its simplicity, is 100% true. Why else would we come together up here, week after week, if it wasn't to support a different way of being, a value set that we all aspire and work towards, a life of meaning and purpose and love and compassion lived together, come what may. There's only one reason for joining a Unitarian Universalist Church, to support it. And know that by your support of us, we will support you. Now, my next John Wolf story was told to me by someone who visited All Souls uh, after a transformational capital campaign that was conducted in the late 1980s. Uh, the nearly 70-year-old church uh, was remodeled and expanded uh, it was a remarkable transformation. And a minister colleague of mine uh, was walking uh, the length of one of the new hallways uh, and saw his old friend, uh, Reverend Dr. Wolf, and said, John, this is just beautiful. You must be so proud. What a gorgeous church. And without skipping a beat, uh, Wolf said, 
Isn't it amazing what God can do if you give him a little money? We're clear-eyed, my friends. We know what hard work it takes, what sacrifice it takes to make big things happen. But we're also full-hearted. We know why we work hard and why we sacrifice to do these big things. Because it's worth it to show up for one another, to show up to fulfill our long legacy, to show up to leave a legacy for the children that will inherit this church from us. We show up, you you man. And I love you so much for it. Amen and blessed be.